Flipping is probably the number one way to make the most amount of diamonds starting from absolutely scratch in Pet Simulator 99. And today I'm going to show you guys exactly how you guys can flip things with at least three methods for specific items that I have personally done and that has worked over time as well as just general tips and what you guys should be doing and pricing things, stuff like that. Most of it just comes down to market knowledge pretty much and just spending as much time in the trading plaza as possible. As you guys can see, I have 10.6 billion diamonds earned on my booth in the trading plaza. So I pretty much know what I'm talking about. And most of those diamonds earned were pretty much not huges. I think I reached my first billion diamonds earned on my booth before I even started trading huges at all. That's a lot of transactions from selling a lot of smaller items basically is what I'm trying to say. If you want to find out some interesting things to flip in real time, join my Discord where we do daily giveaways and have a helpful community. That can let you know pretty much anything about Pet Simulator 99. And if you like these types of videos, we do them all the time on the channel, so consider subscribing. It helps out a lot. Let's get right into it. I'm going to show you guys the art of flipping. So this is probably one of my most requested videos on all of my trading series about how to flip. And truly, it's not that easy of a video to make and why it's kind of hard to really explain it. The number one thing that you can have that helps you to trade is just knowledge of prices. And probably the thing that's helped me the most in Pep Simulator 99 is I've been keeping track of prices of the most commonly traded items. So every four hours I go through and I copy down all the prices of about 20 items. But you guys don't have to start with 20 items. You can just do this with like three to five items that you know and that are in your price range. So for example, you could write down the price of pinatas, diamond seeds, instant plant capsules, pretty much anything that's in your price range that you like to trade. You should just start jotting down these prices every time the wrap updates, which is every four hours. It's at the same time every day. So let's say you start playing at 4 p.m. Eastern all the way until like 12 a.m. Eastern. The three wrap updates that you're going to be around for are the 4 p.m. wrap update, the 8 p.m. wrap update, and the and of course the 12 a.m. update. So every day that you play, if you're able to update the prices and then basically just keep track of them, it's gonna make it so it's a lot easier for you guys to start flipping these things because you're just gonna understand how the price moves and how it's been affected recently. For example, an item that is decently easy to flip right now are these pinatas because a lot of people like to use these especially if they have super drops to basically just break them and sell all of the gift bags that they get from them. But if you don't have super drops, I'm not sure if it's actually profitable to do this, which is why I've never really talked about it in a video. Plus, I know a lot of people don't actually actively grind where they have to actually spawn things. So it's not really a method for everybody. Personally, I never really spawn items when I'm in the grinding sessions because I'm usually just AFKing in those. So I usually have plenty of these pinatas left over. So you can actually sell them for like 60k when the wrap value is more like 50k. I believe earlier I started with like 300 of these things. So I was able to flip like almost 150 of them already. So if you're able to find these at wrap value or lower, you could just list them basically for 10k more and then make that 10k difference on each one. So if I were actually flipping these, I believe I would make like 1.5 million, which is not bad. I'm sure that's a lot of diamonds for most of you guys. But the thing is, you don't only have to flip one thing at a time. So you could have some of the other stuff that we're talking about in this video on your booth at the same time. So you could be selling multiple things and making that much more profit. One thing I did forget to mention is that 100% you guys should be using an alt account to be selling your stuff. Many of you guys know this already, but this account I've been using solely to sell things on since I've begun playing. I do have a tutorial on my channel of using Roblox account manager if you want to learn how to run two instances of Roblox at the same time. You can use that or if you're on Windows you can use the Microsoft Store version of Roblox and then use the Roblox player as well. And that's another way that you can run just two instances of Roblox at the same time. Just trust me it's worth it because if you really want to make the most out of your time in Pet Simulator 99, you're going to want to have an account that's just selling things 24-7. I actually have three accounts. I have one that's usually opening eggs 24-7, and then I have one that's grinding 24-7, and then I have this one. You can pretty much find me in the train plaza 24 hours a day on this account. Most of the time, I'm AFK, so if you try to talk to me, I probably won't respond, unfortunately. But I'm not lying to you guys. I literally use this account only for trading. I do have it to rank 18, though. 
Sometimes when I do sell everything, I do bring this account with my other accounts just to rank it up and get it ready if I need it for any kind of event. As you can see, it's rank 18, which was the max rank before the last update. So before this update's over, I probably will bring this out of the trading plaza just to rank it up at least. But really, it comes down to just being in the trading plaza and trading the things that you know and that you actually own in your inventory to learn the prices just so you can be able to buy those for cheaper and then sell them at a premium. I try to only buy things that I think I can resell for 20% more or higher. So that's why the pinata is such a good one to flip, especially if you can find them for wrap value. 20% of 50,000 is 10,000. So if you're able to sell them for 60,000, you're automatically making 20% right there, which is that sweet spot I like to do. The only reason I suggest that you guys do this is because if the price happens to fall for these items, that 20% buffer makes it so it's pretty hard to actually lose out on the investment that you put in. It is also important to note if you have a ton of one item, I actually find it's easier to sell them out because people that are looking for items in bulk are often willing to pay a good premium for those items just so they don't have to keep looking for more. I know this all too well because in my opening series, it often takes me about like three to four hours at least of just going around the training plaza and looking for stuff like these large gift bags. So if I'm able to find somebody that's selling a thousand of them and they're selling them for like 13k when the real wrap value is 11, then I'll usually just give up and buy them because I don't want to spend any more time than I already have looking for these items. So if you are able to get things in bulk, I would suggest trying to sell them for a good premium first above the wrap value. While wrap value is something very important to go off of, oftentimes the wrap value doesn't really translate to how much it'll actually sell for. When strong inflation is hitting, oftentimes people will be buying things for more than the wrap value. And then during times of deflation, people are often not buying for wrap value at all and only buying below. And this is when it really comes in handy. Keep track of those prices just so you guys know what the market is basically doing at any given time. Because if you are buying things at wrap value during a deflation period, you will probably end up losing out on your value because people aren't even going to be buying things for the wrap value. So it's important to know what the real prices of things are. With stuff like the diamond seed, if you know for a fact that you could sell these for like, let's just say 18K, the wrap value is 15K. This would be a good thing to go around and just keep spamming, like going to different plazas, looking for them for wrap value or below because stuff like the diamond seeds are sold so much that a lot of times people were just trying to price things below wrap value just so they can get them sold. But you know for a fact that you've seen them being sold for like 18K. If you know that you could sell this diamond seed for 18,000 diamonds and the wrap value is 15.2K, that is the perfect item to flip. You can just go ahead and just keep searching these trading plazas until somebody's selling for wrap value. A lot of times this wrap value will be lower than the actual selling price because most people underprice wrap value just so they can get things sold quick. Especially if they're grinding a lot and getting a ton of items, they're just trying to get as much things off their hands at once. So you can use that to your advantage and then go find them for at least wrap or below and then sell them for that real price that you know people will pay. A good example of this actually are these Instaplant capsules. For some reason, I usually am able to sell them for like 20,000, even though the rep was 15,000 at the time I was selling them. Because you know a lot of people are doing that diamond method that I showed in my other video. And it's often super hard to find any of these in the trading plaza. So a lot of people that don't know the method will just sell them for wrap value because they're trying to get them off their hands. So if you're able to find these for wrap, I'm pretty sure you could sell them for 20k which would be a 20% profit, which falls under my personal rules for flipping stuff. But now we're going to start talking about some specific strategies that you can do to make a good amount of profit flipping things. Keep in mind though, you have to double check the price of these things that I'm showing you because prices change all the time. So sometimes these methods will be effective. Sometimes they won't. It's just important that you double check the prices before you start trying these methods because literally sometimes prices jump 50% in one day and sometimes they fall 50% in one day. So sometimes these will work really well and sometimes they won't. Just a fair warning. This is actually a decently popular method, but sometimes people forget about it. But in recent times, this has actually been a very profitable way to make diamonds. The only problem with this method is that it does take an initial investment of like 40 to 45 million diamonds in order for you to even do this. But I will be talking about some other cheaper methods that you can do later in the video. 
I feel like the basic concept of this idea is a good one to learn just for you to better understand like the types of things that you can flip. A lot of people forget about this huge Atron machine that is in the old world. If you don't know what this machine does, so basically every single type of exclusive counts for a certain amount of points that you need to add up to get 100 points, which gives you the huge machine blurred Dominus egg, which is worth a whopping 63.9 million. So for example, the blueberry cows, which are the 85% exclusives, just give you one point. 90% exclusives give you two points and 95% exclusives give you three points. And then basically every other type of exclusive gives you a different one, depending on if it's like golden or rainbow or shiny. But what you want to pay attention to with this method is actually these 90% exclusives are pretty much the sweet spot. As you can see, you can buy an orange oxalot for not even a million diamonds, which counts for two points each. So if you get 50 of these things, basically it's going to cost you 50 million diamonds to get one of these 63.9 million diamond eggs. So you're going to be making a whopping 14 million diamonds by just going out and buying 50 of these things. Of course, you have to spend time finding these orange oxalots and then selling the egg. And how long that takes really depends on who's buying them because more often than not, people are looking for this egg, but it's kind of a niche item, so it's not the fastest selling thing. But to be making a 14 million diamond profit off flipping these things is pretty incredible. But remember, these are just the prices right now, and these things do go up and down, so sometimes it is gonna be worth it, sometimes it won't. An even better priced exclusive to use for this method are actually these Jelly Shibas, which are for selling for more like 950. So if you take 950 and put it in the calculator, multiply that by 50, you're gonna get 47.5 million. And subtract 64 from that, you're basically making a 16.5 million profit on this transaction. And all you have to do is spend your time finding all of these exclusives, which really isn't that big of a deal most of the time. People like to sell a lot of these things at once, so sometimes you can find a good deal on 50 of them at a time or even 20 of them, which will save you a lot of time. This is a really good method because I'm talking about it. It's probably going to get a little worse because more people are going to be trying to do this. So they're either going to drive up the prices of these or drive down the prices of those. Sometimes you might be able to even find a good deal on something like the specialty exclusive. You're just going to have to do the math on each one to figure that out. But right now, the 90% exclusives are the bread and butter for this method. Again, the only downside to this method is that you're going to need 45 million diamonds to invest initially. Another really good method that I've made a ridiculous amount on is my magic shard method. But sadly, it's not really viable right now. But it's just something good to check up on every once in a while to see if it does work. I have a whole video on this if you want to go check out my channel. It's basically using these magic shards, which you can use in the magic machine in the first world. You basically combine 16 of these and you get a huge potion, which oftentimes is selling for a lot more than the 16 magic shards that you use to make it. You can also use these magic buckets as well. The magic buckets are actually cheaper now, but they're still not really viable because as you can see at 8k each, if you multiply this by 16, you're going to get 128 and the potions are only selling for 123. But a big bonus with this method is that there's actually an achievement for using the magic machine. So if you use the magic machine 450 times, you actually get a free overload charm, which is worth almost 7 million diamonds. So even if you are able to do this method and break even on it, you can get this overload charm for free, which is just a bonus 7 million diamonds. So I definitely suggest you guys do this at least once, probably when the magic shards aren't as expensive as they are right now. But overall, it's still not a bad method. Just something you're going to have to watch over time. And the last method I'm going to talk to you guys about today is basically flipping huges. So during times of inflation, it is really easy to flip a lot of these huges because most of the time people don't know that inflation is even happening, which is where you can make the most amount of diamonds. So basically all you have to do is find people that are selling for wrap and pretty much during all times of the market, people are always going to be selling things for wrap sometimes because they might need diamonds for things. So they'll be willing to sell their stuff for wrap a lot of the time. So during inflation, this is obviously the easiest time to do this, but you just go around constantly going from plaza to plaza, looking for these huges at wrap value because you're most likely going to be able to sell them for more than that price. All right. So like these ones, like, so it took me about four or five trading plazas and I was able to find some of these for 16.2 million, which is under wrap by 400 K. This one's, this guy's actually selling one for wrap value as well. So I'm gonna buy this one. 
or it's he was selling it for rap value basically so what i'll do after i find these for rap value i will get in my booth make sure you're selling your ones that are lowest level because they usually don't sell as fast as the higher level ones so it is important that you're cycling through your bad ones just so when you really need to sell these things you actually can sell them for a higher price so basically what i will do is sell these for about 300k above wrap value so that'll be 16.9 million right now and then i'll be afk in the trading plaza for a little bit and if they sell pretty decently fast i'm gonna know that i can basically sell these things for 16.9 million so basically any other ones that i end up finding around the trading plazas that are 16.9 million or lower i'll just buy them out and then come and then try to sell them for a little higher and basically just keep repeating the process and you can pretty much do that with any of the huges but most of the time you're, you're going to want to do the most common ones because those are the ones that honestly people go out and look for most of the time so those things will have the highest turnaround rate and you'll be able to flip things even quicker pretty much that is it though you guys you can use all of these tips at once pretty much it basically just depends on how much diamonds you have to currently invest have your account set up here and selling all day that's pretty much the only way to do it having an alt to sell your stuff on is super important one thing i forgot to mention is that you guys most definitely should grind up so you get at least five huges and basically that's going to give you access to the pro trading plaza because the pro trading plaza is often the time where i find the best deals i usually end up selling my stuff in the regular plazas however because more people have access to it so it just makes more sense to be selling in a trading plaza where more people have access to it but I don't think it really matters that much. I just like the pro trading plaza because I often find a lot of good deals in there. Because it's usually rich people that don't really care much about a few hundred thousand diamonds. So you can usually use that to your advantage to find some cheap deals. Basically make more off your flips. If you have any questions about the market or any other trading questions, I can help you out the quickest in my Discord. I spend a lot of time of my day answering questions in there and we have a whole team of people that can help you at all hours of the day. We also give away a huge every other day in there. There's pretty much no reason you shouldn't be joined up at least. It's absolutely free. But thank you guys so much for watching and peace out.